He taught, you know, he teaches us clearly that we're not bound by our yesterday. Today, church, don't let Satan keep you bound another minute. God has a calling for you. He said there, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to the things which I which are ahead. He says, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature. Okay? Maybe we need some maturity in our life. But he said, for as many as are mature, have this mind. I mean, many times, do we not talk about the mindset? I mean, we could preach a whole sermon and a whole series over the mindset. But he teaches here, have this mind. Have the right mind. Amen. Have the mind of Christ. He says, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even to you, this to you, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Think about that right there, church. We're called to be of the same mind. The mind of Christ. And when we understand, we're not here to see who is the best singer, who's the best whatever, who's the best, who's... No, church. The Bible teaches, compared to His righteousness, we're all as dirty as a filthy rag. We can talk about that. But we're not here to talk, like, lie out on laundry. We're here to say, God, in You, God, I can press forward to the call of God that's upon my life. God, You have called me in such a time as this. And when you begin to understand that, church, there's no demon in hell that can keep you bound. There is no demon in hell that can keep you bound. Last week we looked at two scopes. One scope was to attain. The other scope was to advance. To attain, we said, was a success and achievement. I mean, right now, if you're married, I mean, I pray that you want a better marriage. You might say, I have a great marriage. I don't have a great Whatever it is, but we all want to better this. We all want to attain a closer walk with God. We all want to have a better relationship with our kids. We all want to have better relationships in areas of our life. The Bible says, one, we're to attain, and two, we're to advance. So we don't just get to a level with God and say, God, I received you as my Savior. I slipped the hand up, slipped the hand down. We don't do that here. But anyway, God, we, we, we ask you to come in our heart. We received you as our Lord. We received you as our Savior. And God, we followed after your word. But see, if we follow after His Word, we understand it's just not attaining, it's about doing. He says, don't just be a hearer of my Word, but be a doer of my Word. See, that's what he says in James here. But anyway, last week we said we could attain, and two, we could advance. Attain was success and achieving. Advance was to move forward in a pers purposeful way. I had trouble saying that last week too. Anyway, how many of y'all know God has a purpose, and He wants you to move with a purpose? You're not here by accident. You're not listening to these words by accident. God has a purpose and a calling of the Most High God upon your life. Does that just awe you? I mean, I'm at awe. When I think, God, you can use me. Come on, we can think about our past. We can think about where we come from. We can think about our shortcomings. We can think about all the things of why God couldn't use us right where we're at. But you've got to understand from the time that you was conceived, God had a plan laid out, steps ordained for us. Don't think you're here by accident. Don't think it's just... Because verse 16 said this, Nevertheless, to the degree that which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Church today, I pray as we continue as a church growing in Christ, growing in the Word of God, moving forward where God has called us to be, moving forward in what God's called us to do, our mind is going to be like it be one because we're going to have the mind of Christ as the Word teaches us. We're going to grow in that. Think about this. You know, there's, there's many of us here that I'm talking about having the mind of Christ and understanding that the Bible has rules, it has guidelines, it has direct instructions on how do we to live our life. And each one of us can hear him say, probably not, most of us don't like rules. We don't like to submit. I mean, we, 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 keep, we, we live that lifestyle, right? But just think what happens and when we don't obey rules. I mean, most of y'all are going to get in your car, you're either going to go north or south. And you hope everybody on that interstate, whenever you get on the interstate in a minute, a little bit, 
and your passage of travel are going the same direction you are, right? Because there's a rule, there's a law set up, and this is how we travel. Without that church, it's chaos. And understand it, if we decide, you know what, Jesus, I don't want to do it your way. I want to do it my own way. Understand, chaos is about to happen. God cannot use this if we're not willing to say, God, Thy will be done and not mine. God, Your way be done, not mine. God, whatever You say, I'll do. You know, just here in a, a little bit, most of you are probably going to be going to the fill station and buy some of that $4.50 diesel. I'm going to tell you what, water is a lot cheaper. Water is a lot cheaper by the gallon. But what happens if we try to put water in our gas tank, our diesel tank? It don't work. Same way we're putting our opinions and what we think in our life, not according to God's Word, understand this. It won't work. You wasn't meant to run on something outside of God's Word. It's not about what your neighbor said, your granny said, or whoever said. It's about what God said. And we understand we're serving God because we have a manual right here. We raise our kids according to God's Word. We go to work and we do our job according to God's Word. Our marriage, we do it the way God said to because it's according to God's Word. You name any area of your life, I mean, I'm telling you right now, how it's going to work properly is do it according to God's Word. We looked last week about attaining and advancing. If you got your Bible, turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. So we have direct instructions the Bible teaches us how to live. Right here, we're going to look at some 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. We're going to look at some direct things, church. How are we going to attain God? How are we going to advance what you've called us to do? It's pretty simple. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 reads like this. But also for this very reason, give all diligence. Give all diligence. I Googled the word diligence because I want to make sure I understood the right Definition of, of diligence, careful and persistent work and effort. Careful, persistent, and work and effort. I mean, God, are we being diligent in pursuing after you? God, are we being careful? Are we being persistent? He says, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Add to your faith virtue. What is virtue? Is having high moral standards. Adding to your high moral standards, adding to your faith. Yeah, you got faith God can save you. You got faith God can heal you. You got faith God can deliver you. But he says here, also add high moral standards to that. So you got faith. Add the virtue. Add the high moral standards to your virtue. He teaches us to add knowledge. How do we add knowledge? From the Word of God. To knowledge, self-control. We don't do things because we want to. We don't put water in our diesel tank because it's cheaper because we already all know here it's not going to turn out very well for us. Same way if we go to places we don't have any place to be in or doing things we have no business doing, it's not going to work out very well for us. He says, to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. I'm going to tell you what. If you go on the highway very many times and you're practicing that self-control and that 27th person just cuts you off and if you're pulling that truck and trailer, sometimes it's kind of hard not to let go lose the self-control. Amen? We all have areas that we have to work in our self-control, but he says there, to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brother kindliness. And to brotherly kindness, love. Today, church, we have no excuse not to walk in love. And I say, man, I'm, it's hard for me to love people. It's hard for me. You know what? You don't have an excuse. He says, there's your brotherly kindness and love. He says, for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. For he who lacks these things are short-sighted. See, church, if we want to know why sometimes we can't see, the Bible teaches us if we don't do these things, we're short-sighted. Even the blindness and has forgotten that which was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, 
be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church today, as we know the call of the God in our life, and He teaches us right there. To, what did, let me go back and read it. What He said. Therefore, be even more diligent to your call. I mean, whatever it is that God's called you to be, have your hands to the plow to, be more diligent. Be careful. Be persistent. Don't allow yourself to get distracted from the things in the world. Don't allow yourself to get distracted because things aren't the way you thought they would be or happen the way you thought they would happen. I encourage you right now. Keep doing the work. Keep doing the work. You know, as a rodeo coach, I, I watch kids that, that, that come in. They come into college in September and they're all on fire for I'm all on fire for rodeo, excuse me. I'm God too, but I'm talking about rodeo right now. They're all on fire for rodeo. Man, and they're they're ready to win. After about you valley the second rodeo, they get distracted. Things that go the third way they thought they would right at first. They quit practice and they get interested in other things. And they never fulfill the win that could have been there for them. Church today, the same way in the spiritual. You know what? You might say, man, my last relationship didn't work out. I'm going to tell you, just because your last relationship didn't work out doesn't mean God doesn't have something else in store for you. For you. Whatever it might be, understand this. Keep doing the work. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 says this. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus who will judge the living and the dead at His appearance in His kingdom. Preach the Word. Today, guys, according to God's Word, I'm charging each one of us to preach the Word. Preach the Word isn't just behind a pulpit with a Bible and a set of notes. Preaching the Word is how you conduct yourself. Preaching the Word is how you handle your business. Preaching the Word is how you act at school. Preaching the Word is how you treat your spouse. Preaching the Word is how you live every moment of your life. When we understand this, we can get into a whole deal about how we're written the epistle read by the world. The world is looking to want to know what is it different about a Christian than a non-Christian. Whenever you call Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, be a doer of His Word. Right there, understand what God's Word says. He says, I charge you therefore before God the Lord Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearance, preach the Word, be ready in season and out of season. Church today, you don't get to just live for God in the seasons that you want to live for God. You don't just preach the Word when things are convenient, when life is going smoothly. You preach the Word in season, and you preach the Word out of season. You're always preaching the Word. You're always living the Word of God. I encourage you today, make sure we're living the Word of God. He says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all of them suffering and teaching. I'm going to tell you this right now. Sometimes it's pretty hard. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I was a pretty hard-headed kid. Sometimes it took a little bit longer for me to get it through my skull that uh, there was things that just, just weren't going to work for me. But the Bible says, with long suffering. You know, you might feel like, man, I've talked to them about God so many times. You'll keep living God before them. It won't be long that they'll say, they've got something new. Something's happening in their life. Something they're doing is working for them. And what I'm doing is not working for me. Because what I'm going to tell you is God is faithful. God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never, he'll never let you know. He says, I'm always with you. I'll go before you. I'll prepare a way where there seems to be no way. I'll do things for you that you never dreamed of. That's God's word. I'm going to encourage you today. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come, it says this, that they will not endure sound doctrine. I mean, all you got to do is turn on half the preachers on the 
on the computer or the Facebook or whatever, and it's like, where did that come from? That's not scriptural. You know, whatever. There's a time that they come. The Bible says they want to endure sound doctrine. He says, for according to their own, own desires, because they have engineers, they will heap up themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. He says, and be turned to fables. He says, but be watchful in all things. Church today, we got a mandate. We're to be watchful in all things. We're to be watchful in all things. I don't know about you guys, but not thinking about being watchful in all things. If you're a deer hunter, if you've ever hunted much, y'all ever watch that watchful doe? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like that watchful doe. Because there'll be like five or six does out there eating and she keeps looking up at that stand looking and said, the other four, they're depending on her to tell them if everything's okay. But that buck ain't coming out because he's watching that doe and he's still in the bushes. Just as she's out watchful, what is she doing? She's protecting those that are with her. Church today, what I'm currently telling you to do is be watchful. Don't let the de- attack of the enemy to destroy you. Be like that doe. Hey, hey guys. Uh-uh. Going there and doing that will bring destruction. We're not doing that. See, church, whatever he says here, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Today, church, that's do the work of an evangelist and fulfill our ministry. I don't want God has you planted, but you're planted somewhere. You're doing something, and God has you there for a purpose. Whether it's at work, or in your home, with your kids, with your friends of your kids that come over to your house, wherever it's at. Know God's Word. Fulfill your ministry. Don't let Satan tell you you can't. We've already read through that. God has a call, and today I pray that you let those things behind you be behind you. And today, church, we are going to press forward for the mark of the high call. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you, God. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what your word means to us today, God. I pray each one of us in this building today, Father, we put away those things that distract us, those things that keep us from going forward. God, we put all of that stuff away. And God, today, we say, Jesus, here I am. Use me. Cleanse me. Help me, God, to fulfill the call of the ministry that's upon my life. Maybe today you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I've, I've never made Christ Jesus my Lord. I've never made Him my Savior. I just say, right, you're right where you're at. Ask God to come into your life. Bible says, we believe in our heart we confess what I'm about. Right now, ask God to come into your life. Ask Him to be your Lord. Ask Him to be your Savior. Ask Him to forgive you where you you have failed Him. And today when you leave this building, make a decision of saying, Thou will be done. Thou will be done. God, whatever you say, I'll do. God will and follow after you. God, we love you, God. I thank you for everyone that's here, everyone that's viewing, Father. Help us, Jesus, to go forth this week Let those old things be behind us. Help us to press forward, God, with the things that you called us to do, Father. And help each one of us fulfill the ministry that's upon our life. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen.